I always loved when the Dallas Morning News back in the day, there was no internet, and then eventually there was, but it was still a great piece that four to five years after each national signing day, they would look back on who hit and who did not. Among their top, let's say Dallas Morning News had their top 100, whatever it was in the Dallas and Fort Worth area, and it might have been more than that. And you could see where those that, when they were like top 10 rated recruiting classes, that's great. You celebrate, you get all the attention, but rarely does anyone ever go back and go, well, that top 10 rated or top 20 rated class absolutely bottomed out. And we've seen schools, uh, two of them probably, Auburn and Texas have might been the most guilty of not reaching the star level potential based on the various websites. But Stanford has the best percentage of the of the number of the five star recruits who hit in the NFL. Now, I not hit in the NFL were drafted. This is from 2009 to 2019, drafted between 2012 and 22. Among those who had five stars, Stanford highest percentage, Clemson A&M, Miami, Alabama had a massive amount, 44, 30 of them were drafted. Florida, Penn State, Ohio State, Georgia, and Florida State. You hear a lot of the Blue Bloods, or you hear a lot of them on the edge, but Stanford had six five-stars. There's other ones, like Miami had just five. Penn State had six, but they had the highest percentage of five-star players they signed who actually were then drafted, no matter first round, seventh round, or whatever else. Yeah, um, Stanford is just a good place to go for development anyway in almost anything because if you're elite when you're going in, you're, you're more than likely going to be elite on the way out just because of the way that the entire institution works, right? Because you are. Like, there's not, like, um, and I'm sure there are some of these stories where I barely got into Stanford, but you're either pretty much getting in or you're not, and it's more of a numbers game on how many people are there. You're qualified to go there, you're not. And then with the student athletes, when you got five star guys going there, like they are qualified, they're already kind of working at an elite level. So that has surprised me that, you know, and, and look, the sixth guy might have torn his both his ACLs. Yeah. Or he he might have been there too. So I, you know, I I read the the story about Ari Washman, I thought was really in, in, interesting. And I guess David Ubbin was involved too. David Ubbin, uh, yeah. Uh, Mitch Light, yeah. Uh, yeah. But it was it was it was really fascinating to, to see that about who you know who's developing guys and yeah it has been Texas's kind of knock that they haven't been although it looks like maybe that worm is starting to turn and um, guys are going to be hopping in the NFL finally from from Austin. Yeah, I mean I didn't get to read the whole piece, but it mentions in the article that uh, the Big 12's lack of producing NFL talent is directly correlated to Oklahoma and Texas not uh, or specifically Texas uh, and I, I think they mentioned Oklahoma as well but they're not developing on the same level of other programs that are carrying similar weights um, you know I think Texas would admit that they haven't panned out nearly as often as they should have given the amount of you know, number one, number two, top five in general classes that they've had. I mean, there's been what, like maybe a couple in the last decade that weren't top five. Maybe there's more than that that I'm not realizing. But for the most part, they're looking at somewhere one through five, if not one through three. And so to have a bit of a drought to where we are now, where it's like, oh, Bijan John Robinson is going to possibly go top 10. And that's the first time in how long? It's been a while. That's a surprising and then you look at the results, and it's not so surprising. So, yeah, when there's these graphics about the Big 12 and the NFL draft, part of the reason they're lagging behind is, is because, yeah, they're, they're not getting a couple Longhorns in the first round every year like they probably should have been getting. Or, you know, I can't really say that about Oklahoma. They've produced. I mean, they've they put a lot of guys out in the draft and a lot of first-rounders uh, out there as well. So, um, yeah, that's an area where I think that – you know, you hope Sark has now hit a point in recruiting where Bijan kind of gets that ball rolling again, and then, you know, it becomes habit every year where you've got a guy that's in that discussion for top 15 or first-round status, if not a couple guys every year, like the teams you're about to start playing year in and year out. And I'm sure that that will probably, you know, coincide with one another. I think you'll see probably Oklahoma and Texas with some uh, some better draft numbers just purely as a result of the need to develop better than they uh, in, in particular, in Texas's case, have been doing in the last during those ten years. Texas had seventeen five stars, which of course is a nice number. Bama has had forty four. Florida eighteen. Ohio State twenty three. Georgia thirty four. Florida State twenty seven. They were those teams I mentioned. Other than Texas, were among the best. And again, the percentage is still very low uh, that hit after being five stars that were drafted. 
Texas, 17 five stars, four drafted, Oklahoma, 12, and only three of those actually were drafted into the NFL. But also on that list that has not been able to cultivate Auburn, Tennessee, Notre Dame, UCLA, Ole Miss, LSU, Oregon, and USC. 